Well, hello, everyone. Uh, looks like we have enough to go ahead and get started, and we have several things to talk about. So, um, Rao, are you ready to give the tech update? Uh, yes, I am. Let me just share the link here. Okay, welcome to Community Update 173. So, there's, there has not been much of changes on the mainnet, um, but the testnet, we um, had an issue in testing one of the newer versions, and then um, uh, there was a, a slashed validator on the testnet that uh, we cleared. Um, we did the rebonding, and the testnet has been restarted. Um, right now, there is uh, basically the testnet 2 we're bringing up as needed to run the hard fork changes um, and otherwise testnet one is where we're doing most of the testing. So that's the status of the tests. Um, the uh, block merge work is making good progress. Um, I left some of these uh, comments in here from the earlier uh, notes just to give context for people that are just reading this in terms of the streams of work that we're doing. Uh, but basically where we are in terms of the block merge work is the uh, team is creating uh, new tests and or refactoring the existing tests for to accommodate the block merge changes. Um, and related to that, or the, um, it, yeah, they're somewhat interrelated to that as they're doing this, they're looking at the safety oracle and fault tolerance. Uh, calculations and the tests that are being done there, how that's working. And then they're making um, additional tests and or improving things over there as needed as they um, discover how that's working along with the block merge calculations. So that's another part. And then optimization um, activities such as, uh, you know, improving the clearing of the cache type of thing is other uh, kind of work that's being uh, being uh, done. But primarily, all of this work is focused on getting block merge out the door and getting it on the main net, whatever pieces can go on the main net. And then um, those pieces that need a hard fork going on the hard fork. So some of these changes need to be uh, put into both branches um, to move them forward. So that's where we are. Um, separately, there is ongoing work on performance tests um, because we want to see um, what uh, there, are two, there are a few different reasons um, for the performance tests. Obviously, one thing is to make sure that our gather data or numbers as to how block merge is improving the performance. So, but that's only one purpose. The other is to make sure that. Um, we're not discover that that you know things have not gone um, bad because of the interactions in some way or whatever. So we're looking at the performance numbers, not just as gross numbers in terms of transactions per second over the network or network throughput that kind of thing, but also we're trying to understand each step of the way uh, from the block creation through merging through replay. Um, what is going on with the times, you know, where we are spending a lot of time. So things like that. So there is um, quite a bit of work being done there. Um, and the, uh, uh, like I mentioned last time, some of these tests, because of the concurrency, um, to take full advantage of the concurrency, we do need large number of CPUs and large number, I mean, the larger the number of nodes in the network, the larger the number of CPUs we need on the machine. Um, so we are running them uh, intermittently so that we're not running up the cost. However, um, and that's good enough for diagnostic purposes and to make sure that we're in the, we're, we're in the right, uh, we're trending correctly. But what we're also going to do now is begin to do some longitudinal uh, runs of some of those things uh, to say, well, as we accumulate blocks, uh, is are we seeing any uh, undesirable trends? Um, is you know is the network behaving um, well? Whether you're running uh, a few thousand blocks on it or a few hundred thousand or uh, blocks on it, that sort of a thing, because as the performance improves, obviously. Um, the 
amount um, of data increases on a, on a per day basis. And we wanna make sure that there are no unintended consequences of that um, improved performance. So that's something that we'll be doing. Um, uh, probably um, starting now, but increasingly more frequently going forward. So that's about the um, testing. And I think the rebasing of the code, um, all of that is getting close to complete now uh, from the different uh, feature branches. And, and then of course, because we are still running um, uh, a few branches, we will occasionally do that again. But this is the first go around to complete the uh, um, rebasing and then getting the version onto testnet to, for testing purposes. The uh, other um, area I want to speak to in some detail today is the hard fork one, which is going to be carryover of just the balances from the, net, from the uh, current uh, blockchain without carrying on any of the rest of the state. So Will has completed um, all his PRs and has uh, run the report, um, initial report of balances at block height um, eight four eight zero four thousand eight hundred and four thousand, and that's now available uh, for community review. Where the, the this work was completed just a few minutes ago, so we're trying to figure out where to publish it so that people can look at it. We will uh, go ahead and publish those links in the uh, in the members channel and in the government's channel and all that in the Discord so that you can take a look at um, your, uh, any and all rev addresses that you own and make sure that your balances are correct. We're going to leave this um, up there for a couple of weeks so that people have sufficient time um, to check their balances. We're also going to at least try to do some significant communications around this in all the different channels uh, where people are gathering. Uh, to make sure that everybody is aware of this and uh, that they have an opportunity to report any problems. Um, as far as we know, there are no, I mean, other, uh, we had uh, the, um, in the end user balances, there should not be any, um, any problems. So uh, we, um, um, so anyways, you, we, we, you will have those links and you can take a look at it. Um, and, uh, come back with any anything you see that's uh, amiss. The, in the debrief next week, um, Tomislav or, uh, or Will or somebody will present the work that was done to generate these reports. You know, what is the uh, logic being used by the balance reporter um, and where you can actually access that balance reporter to run your own. Um, uh, trial runs on the uh, uh, on the blockchain if you are so interested, so inclined. Um, so that is uh, something that, and the community can of course review that work and comment or ask questions. Um, this is just uh, for everybody in the community to understand how these are generated and also give them an opportunity to audit, if you would, um, the work both from a code review perspective, as well as from a results audit perspective. So all of that would be available next week. Uh, but meanwhile, the balances will be available um, starting today uh, or tomorrow sometime once we publish them so that everybody can uh, verify that their balances are correct. So that's about um, the preparation for hard fork one. And related to that, but separate from it, is the issue of balance adjustments. Um, the governance committee for several weeks now under Jim White Scarver's uh, leadership has been reviewing requests for um, say people that had their uh, rev stuck in ether del delta and all that. Um, for context, we had announced when we, uh, went to mainnet back in February 2020 that everybody that has um, the the rev or rock um, yeah rock in contracts that they don't direct in contracts as opposed to being just in a wallet 
has to move them to a wallet that they control the private key to so that they have access to that. Um, it looks like some people had missed that and you know kept coming back uh, saying, you know, what can we do? So the governance committee has been looking at um, the such requests with a view to the, the completeness and correctness of forensic accounting. So the, the, they're looking at, okay, well, can you prove to us all the transactions that are done? Can you prove to us that you own the key? Um, and can you prove um, to us that the balances that you are claiming are, are uh, correct? So all that kind of forensic accounting stuff uh, was being accounting evidence was being collected from people. Um, and where the committee is um, convinced that, that, that it's both complete and accurate, um, they're making recommendations for adjustments and um, their work is published. Uh, the committee's work is in this GitHub repository, governance committee repository. You can take a look at that. And the responsibility for the treasury integrity um, overall is with the elected board. So what's going to happen is that the board is going to take into account these balance adjustment recommendations um, in, in due course, meaning before we go to the hard fork one. And that will be the end of that, um, those changes. So that's um, a, a related process that is going on. There's not development work, but um, I just wanted to highlight that anyway to the community. Uh, that that's going on and those those decisions by the board will be implemented as part of the hard fork one. I think those are the main things I wanted to cover today. Um, are there any questions or comments on, on anything I had to say or anything I said? All right, over to you, Greg. Thanks very much. Yes, I, I really I want to emphasize uh, um, Rao's uh, comments. Please, please, please check the balances before the hard fork. Be engaged in this process. If you know anybody that maybe is unaware of the, the, the hard fork process, uh, please pass the news along. We need to make sure that we've done all the diligence we can this time around again at the hard fork so that you know people don't come back and say, oh, there was a problem with my balance uh, you know, two years later. Um, so we really, really need to get the word out. So if you are a member and you have you have a channel or a platform in which to to um, put out this information, please do so. All right. So uh, the the board uh, met um, yesterday. Uh, there were no votes, uh, uh, no no deciding um, uh, uh, actions taken. So um, it was largely informational. Um, we uh, actually used some of the time to make sure that we had everything put together for our submission to the IFF 2021 conference. It is my understanding we are the only blockchain conference, um, uh, blockchain project being uh, invited to present there. Um, the IFF uh, conference is uh, at the intersection between the Chinese government and the um, financial sector, the Chinese financial sector. So it's a uh, it's quite prestigious and we're very grateful for the opportunity and very grateful to the China team for all their hard work to, to get um, the IFF to include our submission. Uh, any questions about that? All right. Um, we are revamping developer.archain.coop. Uh, so that, that was sort of languishing and that's been, um, that's being sort of uh, given a facelift and reintegrated into the new websites. Um, Ian, uh, do you want to talk about uh, what's going on there at all? Uh, yeah, actually, we have Raphael on the call as well, who's already uh, this morning um, started some of that work of folding the old developer Archain Co-op into uh, the main Archain Co-op website. So today he uh, we. we changed around some names and we have our chain co-op slash developer um, where there are some where there's a page that helps bring developers up to speed pretty quickly and we'll be uh, elaborating on that as well as bringing over from developer our chain co-op some of the older information 
um, about the tokens, the, the rock and the rev, and the, uh, the conversion between the two and some of the history. So yes, that, that work is uh, underway now. Awesome, that, that's, that's good news. Very good. Daryl, are you on the call? Do you wanna give the community and review update? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, here's the community we can review for May 20th to May 26th. On Thursday, on the Governance Committee, Ian updated us on his research into the Locked Up Rev. Also on Thursday, in the DAP Developer Working Group, they worked on RGov ballot row debugging. On Friday at the Climate and Coordination RCAST, we spoke about an iceberg 75 times the size of Manhattan, which recently broke off of our Antarctica. Um, an article about the Maldives being uh, at risk of disappearing due to sea level rise in the next 80 years or less, and how global temperature rise can decimate prospects and security of food production. And then we also discussed Amazon Web Services and an increasingly centralized internet on Saturday in the RGov smart contract call, review of RGov issues, OCAP, CAPTP, e-rights, and cross-chain transactions. On Monday in the Casper standup, they discussed the basic implementation of OSLF. Uh, so on Monday in the Rev RDEV member co-op planning, planning wallet development crowdfunding, discussed how to find and incentivize members interested in helping to organize RDEV. Uh, yesterday on Tuesday in the R Chain Education Call, discussion of validators and slashing. Also on Tuesday in the Communications Working Group, we discussed getting better data about R Chain on Coin Market Cap on our Coin Market Cap page. We also discussed what to do with developer.rchain.coop. Uh, we decided to let go of it more or less and moved the Get Started page to the main menu and develop it a bit more so that we have a simple go to place for developers. Ian suggested a history of Rev page. Um, also yesterday in the DAP Developer Working Group, we set up crowdfunding for community wallet development and support for offline wallet and MetaMask replacement for which developers need to be identified. Then they did get they did live Roland coding of Argov communications. And this morning in the active member hangout. I gave an update on the eight minute IFF video for the Chinese community. Uh, Jim spoke of multi-stakeholder approach to voting and governance and how it is an accepted approach in other platform co-ops. He proposed that we could work on improving our governance at the AGM in October. Uh, Jim also offered a starting point of how multi-stakeholder holder categories and their percentages could be applied. And Theo brought up a video about how AI can contribute to tax policy. And that brings us to now. Thank you, Daryl. Any questions for Daryl? Okay, so we have a, uh, a hardware acceleration um, update uh, discussion that we will reserve for the Friday call. And I think that about covers all the things we wanted to cover today. Did I miss anything, guys? Is there anything we wanted to add to the list? Do we want to, <clears throat> excuse me, say a few words? Uh, about a future hackathon. Ah, thank you. Yes, Steve, you wanna you wanna talk about that? Yeah, sure. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we we've started uh, some general discussions on our second hackathon. So uh, the the uh, the theme as of right now is the journey to decentralization. How to go from a centralized world to a decentralized world. So we're looking at a tentative date about the, the beginning of September. <clears throat> so uh, here we're coming into June. So uh, June, July, August. So that gives us about three months of planning and preparation. So with this theme of decentralization or this move to decentralization, so we can think of it in, uh, as, you know, uh, the world today runs on dApps that are centralized. Uh, our chain is pioneering the way for applications and more specifically the functionality and services uh, app applications provide. Uh, our chain is uh, uh, creating, helping to create this decentralized world. So when we think of uh, examples, we can think of, uh, you know, GitHub. You know, GitHub is uh, uh, 
very popular with developers and uh, it uh, was purchased by Microsoft. So, you know, here's a repository that's behind, uh, you know, centralized. So imagine, you know, a future world where you have a, a, a GitHub type of uh, service that's on the blockchain that, that's decentralized. So that would be a, a type of um, application that we would be motivated to, to, to look at to try to, uh, to, to build. And you know we we've already made uh, great strides in creating uh, the, the COVID passport. So that's another uh, effort that we could be looking at at the hackathon, and also tying self sovereign identi identity to voting. Uh, and um, so with the the, the voting, um, uh, so we had self sovereign ID identity, and then. Um, uh, with Zulip, that's another effort that we've started. Uh, to, uh, so we would work towards finishing, uh, getting that finished up as well. So uh, we we have a request out to the community. So it's to, to send your ideas for tools for de making uh, DAP development easy. So you know, it's uh, in order to, to build this decentralized world, you, you know, we need to have uh, tools to get us there. So over the, the coming weeks, think about um, if you're a developer, you know, what tools that you would like to see uh, our chain develop. So that would be a part of the, the effort as well uh, for the hackathon is de uh, developing these, uh, these tools. So, uh, so with a goal, it's, you know, DAP functionality. So uh, if we lead with DAP functionality, then the community building comes with it. So, you know, this, we're, we're, we're working towards finishing up, uh, getting towards um, getting the, the mainnet and block merge, uh, everything uh, getting past this uh, tech milestone and moving into a, the next phase of, of our chain, which is that DAP development. So by focusing on DAP development with the hackathon and getting pe uh, everyone energized about that, uh, we're, we're coming together as a community. And so that, that effort, that broad effort of developing DAPs will help you know, strengthen uh, the, 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 the community of the uh, psychology of building uh, on on the platform, and uh, and that's roughly it. So we'll keep everyone posted as uh, we have updates for the the hackathon as we uh, work towards uh, getting the planning and preparation. We'll be making uh, announcements in in uh, in Discord. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, uh, we're hoping to uh, to have a, a a vibrant hackathon this. Uh... This September it should be a lot of fun if we can if we can get more folks participating. All right, um, uh, unless there's any questions, comments, or concerns from the community, I think that's all we got. Any any items need needed to be addressed? All right, thanks to all, um, and uh, please uh, uh, please stay safe, and we'll see you on the other side.